just, first of all, again, settle into our meditation posture. So we'll just run through that. So you just start with your legs. If your legs are crossed, just have them in a relaxed cross position. If your feet, if your feet are on the floor, just um, make sure they're not crossed, that your feet are kind of parallel sitting on the floor. And you can have maybe your coccyx slightly, uh, slightly tipped forward. You can have something under your coccyx, just makes it more comfortable, keeps the spine uh, more straight. So just uh, hands in the meditation mudra, just comfortably in your lap. Try not to have any tension there. And just imagine, just like last week again, your spine is uh, pearls of light. And this is a, a light string that goes up from your coccyx all the way up through the crown of your head. You can imagine somebody is just lengthening your spine, just very gently expanding, lengthening, giving your vertebrae some space in between. Your head slightly tip forward, tip of the tongue on the roof of the mouth, eyes down, whether they're open or closed. Just looking maybe at a spot in front of you about two inches ahead. Just re relax your arms and space underneath your um, not too tight against your um, body. And all our yoga teachers and everybody will be telling us to kind of pull up our psoas muscles and activate the stomach muscles, etc., etc. Just So for this particular exercise, just relax everything, except you need to be straight with certain natural curves in the spine. Now just starting at the top of the head, just relax your scalp. We just notice how much tension we keep in our head and our scalp. Just move down and relax your ears and your face. Relax your nose, your eyes, your cheeks, around your mouth, your jaw. And just relax your arms, relax your belly, legs and hands and feet. And just bring your mind to your breath. So you can just imagine the, well, you can feel the cool air as you're breathing in and it, the warm air as you're breathing out. And there becomes a sensation at the base of the nose or the tip of the nose, wherever you feel it. So you can just get a sense of that breathing in and breathing out. And so we just think how incredibly fortunate we are to be able to do this practice together tonight. The fact that we didn't die today is super amazing. We have another day we can purify our eons and eons of seeds of negative karma. So that's just fabulous. So we just think I'm going to purify myself tonight so I no longer have to continue to suffer so I can work my way towards enlightenment so I can be of benefit to others. It's the ultimate goal. So just breathing in and breathing out. And keep your mind on the breath. Any many thoughts that arise, just let them come and go. Try not to have any attachment to them or any opinions about them. Just notice they're there. And then move on.
So just we can remind ourselves again that there's no negativity that cannot be purified. It's a relief. If there's anything that's happened today or yesterday or this past week that's been of a particularly sharp or difficult, just reflect on that. Maybe some negative seeds ripened. Maybe we all created some negative karma with a response that we could have done differently. So we don't be too hard on ourselves. It's an opportunity to purify. And that's fantastic. So we come to the first of the four opponent powers and the power of regret. So we sincerely regret from the depths of our heart anything that we've done with our body, our speech or our mind that has harmed others or harmed ourselves. We can think of specific instances. Or just general. The things that we maybe don't remember. And maybe the things is almost impossible for us to remember if we understand about previous lives. And it feels a bit like a burden, all this negativity that we might have committed, but we can do something about it. So this is what's so fabulous about this practice, that we can take charge and just deal with it. So then we think about if we have any, uh, if we've taken Bodhisattva or tantric vows, any other kind of vows, me and uh, nuns vows, we just think from the depths of my heart, any, any broken, tattered vows. So we just regret our anger, our attachment the reasons we cause others, harm to others, and think, well, I'm sick of all this suffering. So what can I do about it? Whom can I turn to? And then we think, we come to the power of reliance. So we rely upon, we turn to the Buddha, in this case, the Vajrasattva. And this practice, as I said last time, can be done with Chenrezig, can be done with Tara. Tonight we, we're doing this practice with Vajrasattva. And it's traditionally, Vajrasattva is a purification practice. So it's not that we're asking Vajrasattva to forgive us for being bad. We're purifying ourselves by relying upon him. It's our own psychological process that we're doing here. So we visualize Vajrasattva on the crown of our head. Matt, if you've got a great, thank you so much. And he, you can imagine he's the, this is the mind of our own guru, the mind of our teacher. And if you don't yet have a teacher, that's okay. You can imagine someone like His Holiness the Dalai Lama, or even just Vajrasattva, it's fine like that. And he's appearing in this aspect for our benefit. So you just imagine about two inches above the crown of the head, this kind of blissful, radiant light body. And he's sitting cross-legged, just like in this uh, picture here, on a, a white, this is a multicolored lotus. It, sometimes it, the text will say a white lotus. His face is radiant and beautiful. He's got these lotus-like eyes is how they describe them. And peaceful and full of love and compassion for us. 
And the way he looks at us is with this unbelievable acceptance and kindness, just loves us for who we are, no questions asked, he knows everything about us, all the kind of bad stuff, doesn't matter. He loves us anyway, unconditionally. His mouth is very red and sweet. He's got this kind of appearance of a, maybe a, a youth, young, you know, teenage boy. He's got this black hair which is tied up on a top knot on the top of his head. So his arms are crossed at his heart traditionally, but in this picture they, they look like they're a bit separate. His left underneath, the right, the left is holding a bell which represents wisdom, the right is holding a vajra which represents the indestructibility of compassion and they're being crossed represents the union of these two. So now we say a prayer of refuge. To the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha, I go for refuge until I'm enlightened. By this practice of meditating on Guru Vajrasattva, may I reach Buddhahood so as to benefit all sentient beings. So we also think about developing compassion here. And in order to develop compassion, we need to rely upon other beings. So, the, so in this case, we rely upon both the beings that we have harmed, so we develop a sense of compassion for them. And then also for the beings that have harmed us. So this one's a little bit more difficult sometimes. And the reason you particularly will have compassion for the people that have harmed us is because they are going to suffer for what they have done to us. So now we make a strong aspiration to do this practice of purification for the sake of all sentient beings and must purify for their sake. So now we get to the remedy. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is the actual medicine. So this is the doing the practice of purification. So we're doing, it consists of visualization and recitation of the mantra. And mantra, the word mantra means mind protector, protects the mind. It's kind of nice. So here we've got the, we'll do the first visualization is we're purifying the body. So these are the negativities of our body, which include sexual misconduct, killing and stealing. So we can, again, think of specific instances or just in general. So then you visualize it from uh, Guru Vajrasattva's heart, very compassionately sending this kind of powerful white nectar from his heart. It arcs around and kind of enters the crown of our heads and pours into our entire body, filling us up completely. So it keeps coming and then as it leaves the body, it leaves through the lower orifices of the body and it kind of pushes out all this kind of black, oily, kind of dirty, mucky stuff. And it pours out of us, it disappears into space. It doesn't create any pollution. And there's not one atom left after we've kind of purified. So we just, as we visualize this, we recite the mantra. Om Vajrasapa Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasapa Dina Patita Dina Mebawa Sutokaya Mebawa Supokaya Mebawa Anarakta Mebawa Sawa Sidi Mempe Yatsa Sawa Kama Sutta Me Sitam Shriam Kuru Hum Ha Ha Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Matsa Vajra Bawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ahum Pe Om Vajra Safa Samaya Manupalaya Vajra Safa Dina Patita Dina Mebawa Sutokaya Mebawa Supokaya Mebawa Anarakta Mebawa Sawa Sidi Mempe Yatsa Sawa Kama Sutta Me Sitam Shriam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutsa Vajra Bawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ahum Pe Om Vajra Safa Samaya Manupalaya Vajra Safa Dina Patita Dina Mebawa, Sutokaya Mebawa, Supokaya Mebawa, 
an arakta mebo wa sawa sidi mimpe yata sawa kama sita me sitam shriyam guru hum ha 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 ho bhagawan sawa tata gata vajra mame mutsa vajra bawa mahasa maya satpa a hum pe. So then we just feel completely delighted that all the harm we've ever done to any sentient being with our body is completely purified. And just think there's no way we could ever harm another sentient being with our body ever again. All we will be able to do is be of benefit. So then this next one is a purification of our speech. So we're thinking particularly of uh, any lying because it confuses people. Harsh speech. Talking out about people behind their backs is something we do all the time. And then uh, gossip, just rabbiting on about nothing, just useless speech, wasting people's time. So then, this particular visualization, Guru Vajrasattva again sends out this unbelievable, powerful white blissful nectar from his heart chakra again it arcs around enters our crown fills our entire body and this time forces all the negativities of our speech kind of from the bottom up and it kind of all the kind of dirty mucky stuff disapp disappears up out of the crown of our head out of our orif upper orifices it's almost as if when you fill a dirty glass with water all the kind of muck floats to the surface so just imagine this visualization, all the dirt coming, coming from the bottom all the way up through the top. Om Vajrasafa Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasafa Dinapatita Dina Mebawa Sutokaya Mebawa Supokaya Mebawa Anarakta Mebawa Sawasidi Mimpi Yata Sawa Kama Sutta Me Sitam Shriam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutsa Vajra Bawa Maha Samaya Satva Ahum Pe Om Vajrasafa Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasafa Dina Patita Dina Mebawa Sutokaya Mebawa Supokaya Mebawa, Anarakta Mebawa, Sawa Sidi Mempe Yata Sawa Kama Sutta Me, Sitam Shriam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan, Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutsa Vajra Bawa Maha Samaya Satva Ahum Pe, Om Vajra Safa Samaya Manupalaya Vajra Safa Dina Patita, Dina Mebawa, Sutokaya Mebawa, Supokaya Mebawa, Anarakta mebawa sawa sidi mempe yata sawa kama sutta me sitam shriyam kuru hum ha 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 ho bhagawan sawa tata gata vajra mame matsa vajra bawa maha samaya sattva ahum pe. So just imagine that all the gossip and harsh speech and useless speech and lying and talking badly about other people behind their backs is all purified, completely gone. And there's no way that you can ever imagine it being ever possible for you to do any harm with your speech. And now with purification of our mind, again, Guru Vajrasattva very compassionately sends powerful beams of this laser light this time from his heart chakra. And this arcs around and enters our crown chakras, fills our entire being and just as Lama Yeshi says, you know, as when you walk into a dark room and flip on a, a light switch, the light instantly dispels the darkness. And so this is the visualization that we have here as well. With this, as soon as the light kind of hits our heart, all the darkness is dispelled. So we just think of these three negativities of the mind. It's all our attachment. And underneath attachment is this kind of neediness and grasping and wanting. And then there's this ill will, which is basically just anger, wanting to harm others, jealousy. And then there's this kind of, it's a little bit difficult to explain, but it's just more this sort of negativity of the mind that doesn't really believe what we, the Dharma. Just, it's just very important for these other two really is this attachment and grasping and this ill will causes so much harm to ourselves and leads us 
to make all these kind of negative actions. So we try and purify this with this blasting us with this light. Om Vajra Safa Samaya Manupalaya Vajra Safa Dina Patita Nida Mebawa Sutokaya Mebawa Supokaya Mebawa Anarakta Mebawa Sawasidi Mebayata Sawa Kama Sutta Me Sitam Shriam Guru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Kata Vajra Mame Mutta Vajra Bawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ahum Pe Om Vajra Safa Samaya Manupalaya Vajra Safa Dina Patita Dida Mebawa Sutokaya Mebawa Supokaya Mebawa Anarakta Mebawa Sawa Siddhi Mepe Yatsa Sawa Kama Sutta Me Sitam Shriyam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutta Vajra Bawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ahum Pe Om Vajra Safa Samaya Manupalaya Vajra Safa Dina Patita Dida Mebawa, Sutokaya Mebawa, Supokaya Mebawa, Anarakta Mebawa, Sawa Sidi Mepe Yatsa Sawa Kama Sutta Me, Sitam Shriam Kuru Hum, Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan, Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutta Vajra Bawa, Mahasamaya Sattva Ahum Pe. And think now there is no space in our heart for anything but love and kindness and forgiveness and wisdom and bliss and compassion. Amazing. All those kind of sharp, uncomfortable, discomfort feelings, all gone. Just peace in our hearts. And now, this is last visualization is sort of purifying even the imprints of negative karma that are being sort of left behind on our mind stream. It's almost like removing the smell of garlic from a jar, just that kind of final bit. So again, we try and do the other, the three visualizations of the body, speech and mind that we've just done, the light coming down, the light coming up, and the light sort of nectar, sorry, nectar coming down, nectar going up, and then the light blasting us. And just imagine it all happening at the same time, just to kind of completely get rid of these uh, Im subtle imprints. Om Vajra Safa Samaya Manupalaya Vajra Safa Dina Patita Dido Mebawa Sutokaya Mebawa Supokaya Mebawa Anarakta Mebawa Sawa Siddhi Mepe Yatsa Sawa Kama Sutta Me Sitam Shriyam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa tata gata vajra mame mutsa vajra bawa maha samaya sattva ahum pe. Om vajra sapa samaya manupalaya vajra sapa dina patita. Dina mebawa sutokaya mebawa supokaya mebawa anarakta mebawa sawa siddhi mempe yatsa sawa kama sutta me. Sitam shriyam kuru hum ha 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 ho bhagawan. Sawa tata gata vajra mame mutsa vajra bawa maha samaya sattva ahum pe. Om Vajra Safa Samaya Manupalaya Vajra Safa Dina Patita Dina Mebawa Sutokaya Mebawa Supokaya Mebawa Anarakta Mebawa Sawa Siddhi Mepe Yatsa Sawa Kama Sutta Me Sitam Shriyam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagawan Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutsa Vajra Bawa Maha Samaya Sattva Ahum Pe So now we feel we're completely purified, not one atom of negativity left in our mind stream even the subtlest obscurations to omniscience have been purified. Amazing. So now we come to the final opponent power, power of resolve. And this is a determination we're trying to make on a daily basis to not harm others or ourselves with our body and our speech and our mind. Without this determination, without this kind of focusing in on these things that are causing us suffering and other people's suffering, we're just going to keep the habit. We'll just keep doing it. So it's almost like we need to grab a hold of that thing that we have the habit to do that's sort of harmful and try and stop it in its tracks. So this is kind of like a, a beacon that guides us our body, our speech, and our mind. So in this little practice, Venerable Rabin has written that uh, she says that Lama Zoparimpache says that everything exists 
on the tip of a wish. So we just have to kind of want to do this. So we now just think of something that we'd like to work on. And like I've been saying, if the thing is that, that we tend to do is we talk about other people behind their back. And I, I just keep saying this one because it's so common. Half the time we don't even realize we're doing it. So just make a determination if there's one particular person that's maybe a bit annoying or one particular situation that's being a bit difficult. And just say, well, I will not, I'm not going to think about this thing or I'm not going to talk about this person or I'm not going to do this thing between the time I go to bed tonight and the time I wake up in the morning for eight hours or seven hours or six hours, however long you sleep. And because you won't do it because you will be asleep. So you're not going to break the promise that you make to yourself. So we just try and keep our resolutions just simple. Nothing so big. I'm not going to ever do this again, or I'm not going to do this for a year. Just think about baby steps, you know, a minute, an hour, a day, a week, whatever we think we can manage. So now, Rinpoche recommends that we meditate on the emptiness of the three circles. And Rinpoche says, in emptiness there is no I, creator of negative karma. There is no action of creating negative karma. There is no negative karma created. So however you understand emptiness, just, let's just place our minds in that space for a little while. So think about all phenomena as not existing from its own side. Just keep it very, very simple to start with. Just like I've been saying, you know, we just imagine things aren't, often aren't the way we think they are. And we know that very often situations aren't the way we perceive them. If we put ourselves in somebody else's shoes, it's going to look different from where we're standing. And now we dedicate. So all the merit all the positive energy that we've created by doing this purification together tonight, dedicate to all living beings. And think, may all the virtuous karma that I've created from doing this practice ripen as my enlightenment for the sake of all sentient beings as quickly as possible. So we have some, oh yeah, no, let's just go back to the four immeasurable thoughts. There we are. Okay. First one, immeasurable, immeasurable equanimity. And in different texts, they come in different orders, but this is the one that I think is in the latest prayer book, retreat prayer book, FPMT prayer book. How wonderful it would be if all sentient beings were to abide in equanimity, free from the closeness of attachment and the distance of hatred. May they abide in equanimity. I myself will cause them to abide in equanimity. Please, Guru Deity, bless me to be able to do this. Next one, Matt. Immeasurable loving kindness. How wonderful it would be if all sentient beings were to achieve Buddhahood. May they achieve Buddhahood. I myself will cause them to achieve Buddhahood. Please, Guru Deity, bless me to be able to do this. Immeasurable compassion. How wonderful it would be if all sentient beings were free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they be free from suffering and its causes. I myself will cause them to be free from suffering and its causes. Please, Guru Deity, bless me to be able to do this. Immeasurable joyfulness. How wonderful it would be if all sentient beings were never separated from the happiness of high rebirth and liberation. 
may they never be separated from these. I myself will cause them never to be separated from these. Please, Guru Deity, bless me to be able to do this. So let's just do one verse here. As a result of the three times merits of myself and others, may bodhicitta from which the happiness of all sentient beings comes be generated in the minds of self and other sentient beings without delay, even for one second, and that which has been generated may increase. And so some long life prayers there, Matt. Okay, this is His Holiness the Dalai Lama, the wish granting wish fulfilling jewel, source of every single benefit and happiness in this world, to the incomparably kind Tenzin Gyatso, I beseech, may all your holy wishes be spontaneously fulfilled. And Lama Soparimbashe, you who uphold the subduers moral way, who serves as the bountiful bearer of all, sustaining, preserving, and spreading Manjana's victorious doctrine, who massively accomplished magnificent prayers, honoring the three jewels, savor of myself and others, your disciples, please, please live long. Lama Ursel. Venerable one, to you whose kindness exceeds that of all the conquerors for those wanderers in far off places, especially the West, mindful of your loving concern for us and intentionally descending again into a family of a far distant land, we make this request, O Lama, please, please live long. Okay. Oh, only two minutes over this time. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions about anything? No? Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for coming and good night. And I will see you Thursday morning. Anyone who's brave enough and also next. <laughs>